I'm Dr. Sundari Mace, Sonoma County's health officer, and I'm here to share the latest updates on coronavirus in our county with you. Here's my report on cases as of yesterday, August 9th. We have a total of 3,670 confirmed cases, up 114 cases in the previous 24 hours. 1,634 are active, 1,989 have recovered, and we have 47 deaths. There's been no change in the number of deaths in the past 24 hours, but we did report three additional deaths last Friday. We've now performed a total of 75,381 coronavirus tests. So quick update on uh, the COVID-19 data. We heard your frustration about the testing lag and test uh, reporting. It's uh, pivotal information for us to combat COVID-19. The state has fixed the technology issues that have caused the lag and the under-reporting of critical COVID-19 data. We hope to have complete data in the county by the end of this week. I'd also like to speak about uh, the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors um, civil enforcement ordinance that was approved last week by the board. So far, we've had significant voluntary compliance with our county health order, and we really want to thank all of you for the sacrifices you've been making. This has been a long, challenging effort. We're greatly grateful for your energy and dedication to the right thing for you and the community. We want to assure you that our goal is not to be punitive, but to partner with you. Our first priority is educating the public. We want everyone to clearly understand that the way to stop the spread of this, this disease is safe behavior, and that includes not gathering with non-household members. That's why in addition to the enforcement ordinance, supervisors have agreed to invest more than 143,000 in community outreach and education, much of it directed to our hard hit Latinx community. We want to ensure that every member of our community understands their responsibility in this pandemic. We also want to empower you. If you encounter unsafe working conditions, businesses that should be closed, gatherings that are too large, or people who are not wearing their facial coverings or um, abiding by social distancing, you can call 1-833-SAFE-707. Again, 1-833-SAFE-707. Again, our first option is education. We want to be able to back this up with citations if it's absolutely necessary. Uh, so again, the number you can call to help us is 1-833-723-3707. It's been amazing to watch our community come together during this crisis. I can see that more and more people understand just how serious COVID-19 is and know that we all have to work together and do all we can to mitigate this disease. The community question we have for today is what's happening with school openings? As uh, many of you know, emergency orders currently in place from the governor prohibit in-class instruction for our schools. Some schools, however, have applied for waivers for kindergarten through sixth grade classrooms, and we will begin reviewing those um, once the state glitches have completely resolved and our coronavirus data has been corrected. We know this is a terrible hardship on students and a heavy burden on households. Getting kids back to school is one of our top goals. Um, now, whether we do open K through 12 schools or not really depends on our case rate. In fact, if the rates go above 200 cases per 100,000, the state does prohibit waivers altogether, even for K through six. So we will be looking at our data as soon as the data is accurate to see what our case rate is, and we'll keep you informed on that. So to make sure um, that our kids, their families, the teachers and school staff are safe, um, we, even if we are at a case rate of under 200 per 100,000, Schools that apply for waivers must prove that they, meet, that they meet health standards and that they have plans in place that include proper cleaning and disinfecting, screening for students and staff, physical or social distancing, and of course, facial coverings. Um, we'll let you know further whether waivers will be uh, uh, considered in our county or not based on the case rate when we finalize the data. So this is uh, this whole process of uh, schools and school closures and potential for waivers is gonna be a really labor intensive process. It will require the strength and endurance that Sonoma County families have displayed time and time again. So we wanna assure parents that we want your children in school as much as you do, but we want them to be safe. So the first step to getting our kids back to school is gonna be to get those transmission rates down 
so that your kids can learn without putting themselves, their families, or school personnel in harm's way. We need all of your help to make this happen. So have a safe day out there. Thanks again, and we'll talk on Wednesday.